Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today we are talking about what's in and what's out for 2022. We are currently three years into this global pandemic and I don't know about you, but I just want my interior to feel like a big warm embrace. More time spent indoors means that we're scrutinizing our spaces more than ever. We all desire comfort and stability, which drove a lot of our interior design decisions last year. And I'm happy to report that some of these themes will continue to dominate interior design trends for 2022. If you're looking for design trends that have staying power through this year and beyond, this video is for you. The last couple of years have given us a lot of opportunity to reflect on who we are, where we've been, and ultimately how we wish to live. Our homes should be the most inspired space to nourish our bodies, mind, and spirit. Of course, not everyone follows design rules or interior design trends to dictate how they achieve an inspired space, but there are some elements we saw in years past that are still going strong today. Here are some of the design trends that are in for 2022 and what's evidently on its way out. Historical, antique, and heirloom furniture. People are craving pieces that tell a story, add soul to a space, and might have taken some time to find. Secondhand vintage and antique furniture sites like Cherish, Etsy, and First Dibs did so well during the pandemic, and there are plenty of reasons why. Antique furniture and vintage decor is not only eco-friendly since you are repurposing items, but it allows you to have a dialogue between old and new in a space. You can share an intimate portrait of the things you love to surround yourself with when sourcing antique furniture. I have clients waiting over six months for semi-custom sofas from West Elm or CB2 because of supply chain disruptions. So shopping for antique pieces that are available right now is more desirable than ever. Of course, not every client is cool with antiques or secondhand furniture, but whenever I can use vintage, I will. From a design standpoint, the vintage pieces in my home are clearly the star of the show because nothing else looks quite like it. How do you mix and match antiques in a modern space? Start with an antique hero piece and build your room around that. You might even dig up something from the basement or the attic, a family heirloom in storage that needs some love and fresh air. By repurposing the old, sometimes damaged, easily refurbished, previously loved into something brand new to you, you're also reducing your carbon footprint while bringing a rich sense of history and spirit into a space. What's out is mass-produced, cheap, big box furniture that looks like everybody else has it. We are now looking to make long-term investments into our home because you never know when another lockdown will strike. Instead of getting rid of all of the furniture that you currently own, think about the pieces that have longevity and can be easily mixed in with some heirloom antiques. Next, we have natural stone tabletops. Think in terms of travertine, marble, light stones with really subtle veining. The raw, porous, imperfect nature of these organic materials adds depth, soul, and visual intrigue while also mimicking the calming, restorative ambiance of the outdoors. The beauty of natural stone tabletops is that it can be mixed and matched with any type of dining chair. Whether you're mixing and matching wood dining chairs, metal dining chairs, or even fully upholstered dining chairs in with the natural stone tops, the combination of materials could look casual or luxurious no matter how you pair it. What's out is glass tabletops. I mean, they smudge, they scratch, 
they're not that kid friendly and of course for multifunctional spaces like a dining room where kids might need to do their homework or you're hosting family game nights you're looking for a really tough durable top so that it could withstand the wear and tear of everyday family use the warm neutrals that we've seen in years past is not going anywhere as a matter of fact, it's still going strong with a lot more earthy desert tone neutrals to give it a little punch. Warm neutrals include creams, beiges, nudes, and tans in a really rich color palette. Think desert modern vibes with the dusty pinks and the warm undertones. The richer, earthier shades of marigolds and dusty pinks, warm siennas, and rich burgundies are making their way into these warm neutral palettes. Neutral hues and interesting patterns with lots of great texture will add that visual interest you need in a space. We will also see more of these natural earthy tones mixed in with metallic accents in fresh and fun ways. Textured neutrals have a calming and grounding characteristic that truly make a house feel even more like a home. What's out is 50 shades of gray. It just feels too cold, too stark, and too modern. So if you already have a lot of existing grays in your space, try to cozy it up with a lot of warm, light neutrals. Next, we have maximalist prints and patterns, my favorite of the bunch. Clearly, I am a maximalist by nature. That doesn't mean that I like a whole lot of furniture. All that means is I am a really huge fan of mixing prints and patterns. You can expect more depth, more layers, and more richness added to the minimal pieces that we keep and value. Think fringe, trims, piping, brocade, chinch, jacquard, florals, textured prints that are really bold statements on their own or mixed in with other pieces. But instead of wall-to-wall -wall English country style, Think about the modern furniture lines that you already have that you can upholster in these prints. If a fully patterned sofa or wall-to-wall -wall, wall covering feels a little bit too bold for you, think about reupholstering an existing piece you have in this print, or simply add a mix of throw pillows in varying prints and patterns. What's out is white on white everything. This minimalist look feels too stark and really cold and uninviting for a warm and cozy space. The difference between white on white or a room of warm neutrals is that you're layering on a variety of warm light tones versus a room being white on white on white on white. You know that look. It's the white walls, the white sectional, the white coffee table, the white accent chairs. I mean, that look is really out and it doesn't feel comfortable or inviting for 2022. Next, we have arches, curved lines, ribs, and flutes. This can be anything related to interior architectural detailing or the furniture lines itself. Today's trends call for softer lines that are more comfortable and more calming. In architectural detailing, you can look for arches in hallways, room openings, even vaulted niches. Curves can also be seen on furniture beds, cabinets, consoles, dressers. I love these ribs and flutes that add visual interest and depth without any pattern at all. The ribs and flutes of today's design trends appear solid and long lasting, as opposed to cane, which has too much of a bohemian pandemic vibe. Today, we're looking for well-built pieces that aren't easily damaged. I recently stayed at the Proper Hotels in Santa Monica designed by Kelly Wurstler. 
You might remember that I got my start interning for Kelly Wurstler, so of course I am one of her hugest fans. Arches, ribs, flutes, curvy lines, even antique heirloom vintage furniture can be seen a plenty at the Santa Monica proper. I mean, one step into this space and you can just feel the entire vibe. The interior space from reception to the lobby, even the guest rooms really wraps you up like a warm cocoon. A space like this is clearly a testament to the power of arches and curves. It really feels more calming, more soothing, and more comfortable as a result. Next, we have plastered chalky lime washed walls. I am a huge, huge fan of this old world aesthetic. For the last 16 years that I've been designing interiors, there is not one space that I have not outfitted with a plastered wall. People crave tactile surfaces that beg to be touched. This subtle texture allows for a ton of layering. True Venetian plaster can get expensive, so this look can also be duplicated with wallpaper. And lastly, we have biophilic design. If this is your first time, hearing about this term is not going to be the last. It is going to appear everywhere you look especially in interior design and architecture. Biophilic design is an interior design approach that helps to connect users more closely with nature. Biophilic design homes incorporate things like natural lighting and ventilation, natural landscape like green walls or living walls, and natural earthborne materials to share interior spaces. I'm trained in hospitality, so I love to take cues from incredibly designed, LEED certified, and sustainable hotels like One Hotel Brooklyn Bridge. This hotel exemplifies a stunning interpretation of everything biophilic design is all about. From the natural use of raw materials, to the living green walls, to all the natural daylight and tons of open air spaces. Think about how you can incorporate these big ideas into your own interior space. Biophilic design can include direct experiences with nature like indoor plants, ponds, or fountains. It can also include installing a gorgeous skylight that allows natural light to penetrate the space with less usage for synthetic light sources. Common biophilic materials used might include FSC certified wood, bamboos, cork, ceramic, and linen, which all assist in supporting a biophilic design by using natural colors and textures. The benefits of biophilic design is that it can reduce stress, enhance productivity and creativity, and improve our overall well-being and mental health. You can incorporate biophilic design elements into your own space right now simply by opening up all the windows and letting fresh air and the sound of nature into your home. Biophilic design principles also align with feng shui values to let all of that beautiful fresh air in. It allows you to usher all of that positivity into your space and chi to meander and wander throughout the home so that the energy doesn't get stagnant and stale. That's it for this video. What did you think of this roundup for interior design trends that have staying power in 2022? While a lot of these elements are considered trendy, I feel like a lot have staying power beyond this year. I've been collecting antiques and heirlooms for as far as I can remember, and those are my most beloved pieces in the home. I'm a maximalist by nature, I love my prints, I love my patterns, and even if next year the trends say that it's on its way out, I will still have these things in my home that I hold near and dear to my heart. The best thing about trends is that they come and go. It gives you an opportunity to kind of play around with different design elements that you might not have thought of in the past. 
Another great thing about trends is that you can adopt key elements into your space and it might even help you shape your own style and aesthetic down the line. If you like this type of content and you want more trends for 2022, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you agreed or disagreed with my list. Are there any other trends that are on your radar that I didn't add to this list? Let me know in the comments below. Share this video with anyone you know who is looking to incorporate more interior design ideas in 2022. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure to click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.